Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Hey, what's going on? This is Thomas Nicholas. Welcome to the the Man Man Total Groove with your host, Tomb Tomb Stones on Josh Josh. What's up, everybody? Welcome into a brand new episode of the Metal Groove Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are ready to have an awesome kick-ass work week. We're going to kick things off right here with an awesome interview that I have lined up with somebody from a local band here in Charleston. It's a good time. It's a great interview, but I feel like I would not be doing this show justice if I didn't talk about the big live streaming event that happened over the weekend featuring the Foo Fighters talking about some news I've been patiently waiting on for a long, long, long time. Um, and it was dropped in kind of a hilarious way. They made the announcement, but they did this awesome live streaming event. But uh, in case you live under a rock, like I like to say on the show, um, the news is that the uh, Foo Fighters announced their new drummer that, is, that they're going to be using moving forward from now on. And um, just to jump into it, you see I got Taylor back here. I got my Foo Fighters stuff on. Big, big fan of the band. Um, and I've been waiting on this news. I did see in an article that Dave did the drumming for the new album that's going to be releasing next month. So that's awesome. But in um, in a live streaming event that they did yesterday where they kind of had this group meeting kind of come together, it's like a behind the scenes peek at what a Foo Fighters rehearsal or practice would be like. And it was pretty awesome, man. It was really, really funny. Um, just the way that they kicked it off was really, really funny because I guess in such a... Um, such a somber time and uh, kind of in this like next chapter of the band that that a lot of people could see is sad. I guess you kind of did have to put a, um, you know, kind of like a little bit of humor on it just to kind of help you get over that hurdle, you know, just for some of us that were such huge, great fans um, of Taylor Hawkins and, and somebody that influenced my drumming, you know, he's still missing today, man. Here's some of the songs that Dave wrote. It's kind of a bummer. And they, they did play some of those in this live stream. Um, but just to set the scene for you, the band is hanging out. They're kind of in a circle. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool to see such a huge band like the Foo Fighters are just musicians hanging out in a room, kind of like we do, uh, fellow musicians do, just talking to each other before jamming. Um, you'd hear a knock on the door, and then here comes Chad Smith, the drummer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And he has sticks in his hands. You're like, oh, is this who it's going to be? And he's like, he's, he's just saying somebody blocked in his car. So that, that was one. You're like, okay, that was funny. And then here comes Tommy Lee, man, another famous drummer. The drummer of Motley Crue comes in. You think, oh, really? Well, we know he doesn't have time for it with everything Motley Crue's got going on. He just said that he brought some food for him. That was off. That was pretty hilarious. And then um, there's another knock on the door. Like, okay, third time's a charm. This has got to be it. And it's Danny Carey, the amazing drummer, uh, Danny Carey. Um, he's there. He he groomed their poodles for him. So that was that was three teasers in a row of drummers um, that, that that could have been, you know, who were going to be for the Foo Fighters. But they did it in a funny way of uh, kind of like a tease. And then it goes back to the band talking about, hey, man, did you know that he groomed um, poodles? Which I thought when originally when I when I read um that that he was a part of it i was like did, did that say dana carvey because i feel like dana carvey because he is a drummer would have been a hilarious addition to just that little skit they were doing but anyways towards the end of that that little group session you hear a hey can we play some songs and then the the camera cuts to uh to josh freeze who is announced as their brand new drummer and i can't be more happy about that i feel like the fit is perfect he was a big part of the uh the taylor hawkins tribute concerts that they did last year and uh, his trump, his drumming is is um, phenomenal. Man, he's a great drummer. He's been in so many bands. Um, my tie with him, of course, because I'm a giant Guns N' Roses fan, and uh, Buckethead specifically. Um, he was the drummer for the Oh My God uh, single that they dropped in the late '90s. He was the drummer on that, as also a songwriter, and he was also um, a little bit of a contributor to the Chinese Democracy album, as in that he helped write that song as well. And, and he was who introduced, not introduced, but he's who got Buckethead into the band. So um, so Josh Freeze has always been kind of in my wheelhouse of, of knowledge. I've known of him. I know of him as a drummer. I'm very appreciative of what he can do behind a kit. And um, I think it's a great fit, man. Nobody is or can be what Taylor Hawkins was, but I do think that Josh Freeze is going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal addition that's going to help them transition to this next chapter of what the Foo Fighters are. 
Um, but just a little article here I wanted to share with you guys. After months of speculations, Foo Fighters has announced Josh Freeze is a new drummer. Freeze has played with bands like A Perfect Circle, Guns N' Roses, and Nine Inch Nails over the years, as well as others as far as The Vandals, one of his own bands. Freeze was announced as a Foo Fighters new drummer as a part of the uh, live stream that I was just talking about. The Foo Fighters have released a new record that Dave did the drumming on. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But they have a lot, and I do mean a lot of shows that they have lined up um, coming down the pipe. So um, seeing them in a rehearsal space, practicing those songs, hearing how Josh is going to play some of those songs was super cool to me, man. I really enjoy those behind the scenes things. Um, you, you can tell there's some kinks in there. There's some stuff they're going to have to work out. Of course, nothing's going to be perfect. And um, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be a really, really fun thing to stay in tune with and, and, and watch as they progress, man. So so now that he's moved on, he's going to be playing the stuff that Dave just performed, which is uh, which is one of the things I wanted to dive into next. Is um, Now that we know that Josh Freeze is going to be the touring drummer of the Foo Fighters, and hopefully he will be the drummer moving forward, like if there's another album down the road, because we know Dave writes and writes and writes music, man. It's, it just flows out of him. Um, hopefully we'll be on the, on the next thing. Um, but for the Foo Fighters preparing for, preparing for music concert that they just did, that did a live streaming event, uh, Dave Grohl is to credit all the drum work for the band's new album, but here we are. Though two songs had been released prior to the live stream, official credits for who played on what tracks has not been revealed. While there had been some speculation that Dave Grohl, who famously played the drums for Nirvana and recorded all the music for, Foo, for the Foo Fighters debut album, um, had taken up the drums again. Nothing had been confirmed, but during the performance from the 606 studios, there was a moment where Grohl and the well-received Freeze conversed about the drums on a newly debuted song called Nothing At All. Freeze said to Grohl, when you explained the beat to me on the record, you were like, I think I played it with one hand and then I'm kind of doing the same thing and it feels good. It just feels, feels free, which is another one of those things that I feel like seeing those two talk to each other as drummers, like in between, I think they're about to do Monkey Wrench, I think is one of the songs in there that was really, really good. Really, really fast, man, um, which had some funny bits in it as well. But they were just going over, hey, we're going to do this here. Do you want to count here? Do you want kick drum? Um, just kind of all those little mechanical things going on in their brains. It's just cool to me as a drum nerd to watch. Um, so if you can, check out the live stream. It's free, and it's 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 worth it, man. Um, but Dave Grohl said, it was unintentional. Um, I did it when I demoed it at my house. So whether he is credited for writing all of the um, – are recording all the drum stuff. It does appear that he did write all of the drum stuff for the new album, but I'm willing to bet that he did record it all as well. Um, so yeah, that is the little bit of news that I felt like that I had to talk about on the show. Um, as a big fan of the Foo Fighters, it is, uh, it's, it's important to me. And if it's important to me, I want to share it with you guys. So um, that's the one bit of news I wanted to touch on this week. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are as far as Josh being the uh, new drummer of the Foo Fighters, man. I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. And we're going to jump to a song right now called Bronco by a local band here. We're going to dive into an interview with their bass player. That's right. We got a bass player on the show this week. Uh, we're going to dive into that interview right after the song, man. So crank it up. It's a good one. We'll be right back.
Put your fucking muscle band in the docket Daniel chewing up seven grams of chronic Smoke choking the cops Hip hop in the rock Banging on the tape deck Killing shit from all five Escape to a new place someday With the band and get high every day Hit the stage and tear it down We would 40 ounce in a paper bag Newport one Joining me on the podcast today is a bassist from a local Charleston band I think is pretty dope, actually, and their name is just really incredibly fun to say, but his name has been, the name of the band is The Hooplas. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. <laughs> but this has been, what's up, dude? How you doing, my friend? Good, man. Great. I'm happy to be on here. Sweet, dude, oh, man. Yeah. Ready to talk some, uh, talk some music with you, but um, first of all, this evening, how you doing, my friend? Good? Good, and Good. Uh, uh, have I actually had quite the evening. Uh, I had to go to the uh, emergency room earlier to get some rabies shots because I got bit by a raccoon. Oh, no, man. <laughs> yeah, I was going to leave that out, but I couldn't, man. Yeah, I had one caught in a trap out uh, at my house. And when I was carrying the trap, somehow it got out and it latched onto my hand and bit me. And so anyway, wow, yeah. man. Hey, that's, uh, that's the process of living in Charleston, isn't it, man? <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere, man. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's cool, man. I'm glad you're hanging out with me, man. Sorry about your hand. Hopefully it doesn't affect your playing. Oh, dude. no, I'm all good, dude. Okay, <laughs> sweet, man. I kind of match your fingers. Uh, but, but before we dive into the band, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about your start with music, man. Um, so we've been a band um, for a long time now, my brother and I, since we were in high school. And uh, Cody's been in the band for a long time, too, now. And um, we we're all best friends, and we just live and breathe together and uh, you know like I've just been doing it a long time and uh, we just were best friends and just like I don't know we just refused to <laughs> stop doing it and we kind of just you know we don't we just do it because we love it there's no real like you know it's just a passion thing and and we've gotten a lot of awesome memories out of it and are stoked to be putting out more music so yeah <laughs> That's great, man. That's great. But uh, but you personally, have you always been a bassist or where did your start into music come from? Um, yeah, I've always been a bass player. Um, so when we were like in middle school, our buddy Devin got a guitar and he was really good at it. And he uh, was like, we should start a band. And so uh, Adam, my brother, who's still the singer to this day, was like, oh, I'll be the singer. And, I, and uh -huh. I just, they were like, I was like, well, what am I going to do? And our buddies like play drums. I was like, well, I guess I'll play the bass. And <laughs> yeah. And I was in seventh grade, but at the time, all the bands I really liked all had really cool bass players, like 311 and Rage Against the Machine and right. uh, yeah, Primus, like all the stuff I was into in middle school that I still listen to, really, Chili Peppers, all had really awesome bass players, even like Green Day and Guns N' Roses, like they all yeah. have awesome bass players. So I just always thought that bass was cool, like off the rip. So, right on, man. It's, yeah. it's an underappreciated instrument, and I can say you are the first bassist that's been on the show, so uh, props to you for that, my friend. And as a, as a drummer, you know, the bassist is my best friend in the band. So I already appreciate that a lot. But um, OK, let's go ahead and jump to the band a little bit, man. So you said you guys have been around for a while doing the whole thing. Um, if for people not familiar with it, tell us about the sound. Whenever I was checking out some of the songs, um, kind of like a Blink-182 vibe in there, if, if I'm accurate. Yeah. But, uh, tell us about the band, um, kind of your dynamic and, and your sound. Um, yeah, it's funny. We all really come from different, even my brother and I, like, different influences um so that's kind of where that comes from he's got that blink voice kind of he's he's uh 
I don't know. He, it, people always say like we're like Blink meets Rage Against the Machine. Or okay. Blink I can see that. Peppers. It's like we're like a '90s love child with like a modern edge. Nice. And that's yeah. Our lead guitar player Cody is like super into Lamb of God and and like a wow. day or he's into like metalcore and he likes all that kind of stuff and uh he like he's got the most modern taste in music really and then um we kind of just all put it together like that's kind of where the name comes from really it's because it's just like a collaboration of what we all listen to and like we truly do none of us listen to the same bands so like that's kind of where that sound comes from and you know even i sometimes have a hard time like putting my thumb on it but like i just it's fun i always say we're like a heavy alternative band like I don't know, you know, and then we randomly have songs that are pretty laid back and chill, but yeah, uh, yeah we just have a lot of fun with it, man. Zero pretenses is what we always say. Nice, man. So, so you landed on the Hoopla's name because you guys are just kind of like this, this jarble of a bunch of different influences? Yeah, it just made sense. And like we had taught ourselves that since we were kids, like when we were younger, like before we even played music, we, we call ourselves a uh, the 301 hooplas that was our like gang name okay. our area yeah. where we grew up was 301 um in southern maryland <laughs> and uh so we were the 301 hooplas and then once we started playing music and started a band and everything we actually started out as the 301 hooplas like in high school and then like we yes. kept it going and got way more serious with it and we switched over to the hooplas and started really like honing in our sound and dialing in like our style, I guess. And it just, the name just stuck and like, it gotcha. just, it worked. That makes sense, man. That's <laughs> awesome. Dude. Yeah. I, I like that. Dude. It's a lot of fun. Um, I did want to celebrate if you are ready, sir, you being the first bassist on the show, maybe if you had a top five bases that maybe are some of your influences, some of your favorites, or maybe some of your favorite bass lines of all time. Shoot. That's a great question. Um, top three bases for sure would be, peanut from 311 uh tim comeford from rage and flea from chili peppers and you could say Wait, that's the, the, that pretty main line fucking answer right there mainstream <laughs> answer but those guys are fucking awesome dude and just really broke a lot of ground and set the bar and i don't know just awesome fucking bass lines really right you on know? man do you are you a pick do you slap well what was what, your uh technique uh, i i play with my fingers and i do a lot of percussive slap stuff Sweet. but no Lap at the base. <laughs> so, yeah, I do a lot of that. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, I really like bass driven music. So I, don't, I uh, try to try my best to, you know, let that shine in our music. I don't try to be like in a, you know, an attention whore, <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, I like to yeah. rock out and I'll make sure that the bass lines kind of punch through. So, gotcha. Yeah, see, um, if you can tell by my junk back here on the wall, I'm a big Guns fan. I, you brought up Guns a little bit earlier. And if uh, if, you wanna, if you wanted to list some baseline driven songs that you love, the first two that's going to come to mind immediately me, for me is going to be uh, It's So Easy and You Could Be Mine. It just feels like those two oh, songs are yeah. Duff phenomenal. McCag yeah, Duff McKagan's a monster, dude. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, yeah he's goddamn, dude. How Paradise City. You ever check out the baseline in that song? It's fucking crazy. Yeah, and, I feel like uh, whenever they were whenever they were inducted into the Hall of Fame by Green Day, I think they said his melody, his bass line in Sweet Child of Mine, you could just sing along to that by itself. It's yeah, so good. big time. Yep. Pretty yeah, he, he is awesome, dude. He's probably the coolest one in that band. Tell you <laughs> Have you ever seen his documentary? It's unreal. I haven't, man. I, I want to get the book. I want to read the book, man. Yeah, it's really good, dude. It's awesome. Really? He's definitely one of my favorites, too. He'd be in my top five. Nice man, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure he's lived. A, I'm sure. I'm sure he's lived a life that's worth, uh, you know, checking out. I'm sure it's wild. Yeah, and he's a good dude, man. He's like the most normal one out of all of them. I feel like. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. man. Well, what uh, what baselines come to your mind as far as uh some of your faves? Um. Hmm. Uh, what was I thinking? Is a song by Three Eleven. It's really sick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome slap bass line um uh, fucking like every rage song ever <laughs> seriously dude yeah. and tell me baby by the chili peppers aeroplane by the chili peppers um jerry was a race car driver by primus love that wow. bass line. yeah uh my name is mud <laughs> yep. yeah uh 
Um, yeah, and like I said, just like every Rage song, it's just like this. But yeah, Tim Comfrey, that's like one of the most bass driven bands ever. So, yeah. He kills it too, man. He definitely likes, he lays a nice fat groove into all those songs, man. So you're trying to pay attention to what Tom Morello's got going on. But if you listen to that groove he's laying behind, it's it's tasty, man. It's tasty. Yeah, it's epic. <laughs> yeah, so um, back to the band. What kind of places, where do you guys play around town? Um, I did see that you guys have a brand new album that's coming out uh, next month. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that album, maybe some of the songwriting process behind it. But, uh, but, but locally, are you guys considered a Charleston band? Is this like your home base? Yeah, it's our home base. Um, and uh, we've been around Charleston for like four years now. We've played at the Tin Roof a bunch. We've done the Music Farm. We played the Wind Jammer. We uh, did the House of Blues in Myrtle Beach. We did a run of shows with Puddle of Mud last year. That was really fun. Nice. And uh, we were supposed to do a run of shows with Saliva. And, and that got canned because their lead guitar player died like a couple of weeks before the run of shows we were yeah. supposed to do yeah. that was crazy that's how that's how i stumbled upon you guys was i seen you guys on the bill for them because yeah. they, they were gonna be playing right down the street from me i was like oh nice and then yeah. i seen that let me reach out to these guys they're local some local cats i want to check them out yeah so that was unfortunate to hear man yeah it was terrible man and i've always really liked that band like they're you know rap rock driven you know their songs yeah. and we do we have a lot of that in our music too it's a lot of rap rock we my brother likes to rap and stuff so i've always really liked saliva it's always been like a guilty pleasure band and uh, I was so stoked to go play those shows. You know, we were doing a weekend run with them and it was going to be really fun. And then, uh, yeah, Wayne died. That was so unfortunate. And that was funny because I found out through you that that happened before I found out from anyone else. You had hit me up and you were like, hey, man, sorry to hear about what happened with the, you know, is that going to affect the shows and the and uh, the tour and all that? And I was like, dude, what are you talking about? And then I jumped on yeah. Facebook and I was like, damn. And uh, the venue owners who are who where those shows were at that we're supposed to play, they didn't even know about it yet until wow. I had, they were like, "What's what's going on? What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Yeah, their guitar player had a brain aneurysm." And so, That's yeah, you're the, that was right when <laughs> yeah, you're the one who set that firework off for mm-hmm. everyone. And, yeah, we would have found out, but like, yeah, they found out a little earlier than they would have because you reached out to me. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was super unfortunate. But uh, you guys have anything else lined up uh, gig-wise? Uh, yeah, we're actually getting ready to go out to California to do some stuff for uh, Juice Magazine. It's a skateboard magazine. They just put out an issue with us in it, um, which is pretty cool. We're leaving on Thursday. We're going to be gone for six days. We're going to uh, go, uh, excuse me. We're going to be out in uh, Venice Beach. So we'll get to do a bunch of surfing and skating and all the stuff we like to do. Right and on, then and we'll be back. We'll be on the 25th through the 31st. And then um, we are supposed to be doing a Northeast run, like in the middle of the summer that we're in the work, works of solidifying right now. So, okay. yeah, all that is t- TBA. We had a bunch of crazy band drama go on. Um, it happens. We, yeah, that, uh, I mean, we're all good, but we had a bunch of crazy stuff go down that kind of threw spokes in our, you know, threw a stick in our spokes or whatever the thing is <laughs> <laughs> i got you man yeah but we're back at it um we are really blessed to have a really awesome rehearsal space that we practice out out in north mount pleasant and that just kind of has always kept us going and so even when we're not active we're still out there every week just staying fresh and nice and writing stuff and rehearsing all the old stuff and um that's like where we wrote our whole album and you know so we just keep it alive, man. We've always just done it for fun. And then when all these badass opportunities arise because someone likes it, you know what I mean? It just makes it feel worth it, you know? So it's cool. It's all, we don't do it for, you know, we don't do it for the glory. We just do it, you know, for the passion, for the love of it, man. You know what I mean? And, yeah, I uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, just, uh, I don't know, always going to do that. We just kind of have this like unspoken bond where we're just like, you know, hey, we're never going to stop as long, as long as all of us are still breathing and living. Who the fuck's going to tell us we can't keep doing this? You know what That's I mean? Exactly right, man. So yeah. is the songwriting process, is the chemistry there? It just, they just, it just flows out of you guys. How does that work? Pretty much, man. I mean, we've got two full albums out um, and a bunch of singles. 
And uh, we're about to put out a couple more singles before we drop this new album. Um, and, uh, that just seems to be something we've never had an issue with is, is writing new music. Thank God, like we've never like hit some weird wall. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Cody, our lead guitar player is really proactive about writing new music. He's like always the first one of us to like have a new idea. Um, mm. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's my brother. But most of the time we'll bounce our stuff off of Cody and then like I'll just take it to my realm of bass playing, which gives it like its edge and vice versa. Like if I come up with a bass line that I really like and I'll track it and show it to Cody and then he'll, you know, he sits down with it and he'll do his thing on top of like my style of bass playing. And that's kind of where that, like I said earlier, it's like where the sound comes from. And then the last thing we do is the vocals. Like we'll have like a full instrumental done and then we'll sit with it. My brother and I write most of the lyrics and melodies and all that stuff. Oh. And we do the majority of all the singing. Uh, like he's the lead singer and my brother, Adam. And then um, I do most, most of the backups. I sing lead in like one song, but um, yeah, we're twins and our voices like sound the exact same. Like our talking voices sound the exact same. So it trips people out. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the songwriting process has always been pretty fluid and, and unforced and just, you know, just we just keep it rolling. <laughs> so I hear that the talent's there, man. I love the songs that I have checked out so far. And we're going to be playing that Bronco song here in a little bit. Um, but I want to see that. I want to see that stage energy. You know what I mean? I feel like you guys probably have a lot of energy on stage. I saw you guys play the um, My Father's Mustache, right? You guys play that? Play, um, you played that venue? Yeah, we've actually played there quite a bit. Um, that's a good, good local home spot. And um, the studio we've been working with on this past album, Soul Shine Studios, um, have a great relationship with that spot. And they host music uh, every Thursday night. They do original nights there. And uh, so every now and again, we'll go do that. And uh, But yeah, we've had some really fun shows there. Yeah, it's a good spot. Yeah, it is cool. And the sound system is really badass for that bar. Like 100 percent, man. Yes. Yeah. They got a kick ass system. Like for the size of that place, their system and their lighting is like awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, man. All right. So I'm gonna throw some random ones at you and then we're gonna wrap this bad boy up if you're ready, sir. Cool. All right. What's the best band you've ever seen live? Best band I've ever seen live. Oh shit. Dude, it's not really a band, dude. He had a band. He was a rapper, but had a band. It was Lupe Fiasco. Okay. Um, it was up in Maryland at the Dew Tour. It just blew my mind, dude. He, nice. I've always really liked him as a hip-hop artist. I've always been super into hip-hop. Awesome. I've always really liked rap music. And uh, Lupe Fiasco has always been, you know, I've always been a fan of him. And I uh, went to his show, and he just blew my mind, dude. He had a live band playing every song with him, and they were rocking the fuck out. Like, he wouldn't – if you didn't know who he was, you would have thought they were a band, and he was the lead singer. Yeah. Like, wow, they were awesome. – yeah, it was sick, dude. It was, like, one of the – definitely one of the best live performances I've ever seen. And then uh, Pepper is a uh, reggae rock band from Hawaii. Okay. And, uh, and same thing, man. I've seen them a handful of times. They – crush it i've seen 311 put on a killer show a bunch of times but uh something about that lupe fiasco performance on the beach was fucking epic <laughs> yeah, that's cool man yeah that's what it's all about you know it's those ones that those off the walls like wow that was amazing it just sticks with you. that's cool man um yeah. sometimes on the show we talk movies do you have a favorite movie based around music whether it's fiction non-fiction documentary one of those uh, yeah boondock saints yes <laughs> love that movie dude yeah the music in it's badass. It's all like, you know, that Celtic, Irish, like, you know, they got like the Dropkick Murphy shit going on. Yeah, yeah. great soundtrack. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, great I love it. <laughs> That's an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Other than music, or if you weren't doing music, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, Dude, carpentry. My brother and I actually, oh. we have a company we run together and we build a lot of shit. And uh, we've built houses. We do decks, docks, fences, siding, windows, doors. We work with our hands. And we that started our own company, though, because of the band. We couldn't have a boss, man. And anytime we'd want to travel or opportunities would arise, it was always like a big stink. So mm -hmm. years ago, we just went into business for ourselves and um, started our own uh, carpentry company called uh, Good Neighbor Carpentry down here in Charleston. And we that's what we do. And then our lead guitar player, Cody, works with us. And uh, our buddy Devin, who got us into music in middle school, moved down here and works with us too. So, yeah, that's we're awesome. Yeah, we're swamped, dude. We're booked out, okay. and it's cool though because like we just control our schedule. And then like when this California trip and shit came up, we're just you know, of course we can go, you know. <laughs> so, wow, yeah. that's awesome. 
I love yeah. that. Yeah. Just can't <laughs> cut any of our fingers off, you know? <laughs> Definitely, man. That's, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, so if you guys were to be some sellouts and you had to go for a certain look, would the band rather rock some mohawks or rock some mullets? What do you guys think you'd go after? <laughs> mullets, dude. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, my brother would probably have a mohawk. I'd uh -huh. rock a mullet. Or Cody would probably rock a mullet. I got so, you, man. Nice. Yeah. Rock a mullet. CJ's our drummer. He would definitely rock a mullet. I don't know. CJ, I don't know. That's a tough one. I know <laughs> I would rock a mullet. Nice, man. I like that. All right. <laughs> so down in your downtime, what you streaming? What you watching? Uh, what's what's some of your go-to stuff you like to just hang out and chill? Oh, shit, dude. I'm a World War II nerd. Wow, right. Like, yeah, I watch anything World War II related. Um, I've watched World War II in color like three times. I watch like any World War II movie that comes out, whether it's a true story or not a true story. I watch like that movie Sisu that just came out about like okay. the, the, right the gold miner movie is sick. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm super into into that stuff. And uh, and then uh, I don't know, I like uh, documentaries and shit too. So um, I, I, get I like friends and all that. I like, you know, I don't know, kind of a TV nerd, dude. I like The Witcher and Game of Thrones and yes. Yeah. Um, have you seen like, Have you seen The Righteous Gemstones? Oh yeah, love that show, dude. I'm a huge fan of Danny McBride. Yes. Right. Awesome. Uh Vice Principals is awesome. Eastbound and Down is fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, it's killer too whenever they film in your hometown, you just get to see the stuff in the background. That's always cool to see too, you know. Yeah, so the girl who is in um we have a music video to a song of ours called Wolfpack. Okay. And it's on YouTube. Um, we put it out like maybe almost two years ago. Uh, anyway, it's a single we put out and it's one of my favorite songs we've ever written. You should definitely check it out if you haven't heard it. Okay. It's called Wolfpack. And the video to it is our friend Elena. It's our buddy Todd's uh, wife and she's gorgeous and she's cool as hell, but she was in Righteous Gemstones. She's wow. like one of, been one of the extras in that show a few times and uh, nice. she's like... Um, one of like the pretty dancers like in the nightclub scenes and stuff i don't know so anyway it's pretty wild but yeah she's been in rice gemstone she's in our music video sweet man all right i got a couple more for you and that's kind of a good segue because i had a couple charleston questions for you i'm a little biased i love this place i think our hometown's pretty dope um what are your some of your favorite things about charleston that's the initial question and then uh two quick ones what's your favorite music uh, music venue to watch a show or play a show and then eat man Food's a big thing down here. What's what's one of your favorite places to eat in Charleston? Gotcha. So the first question was what I like to do around here. Yeah. Was uh, I like to surf and skate. And so where I live is pretty cool because I'm right in between both of the skate parks. I live uh, right near, uh, I live in Wagner Terrace near Hampton Park. So I'm right in between uh, the Skate Charleston Park and the DIY Bridge spot. And then uh, sure. I'm like 15 minutes from Folly to, if I want to go surfing or 15 minutes from Isle of Palms if I want to go surfing. Yeah. And then uh, my favorite music venue would be, I mean, I'm uh, pretty sure it's everybody's, but it's a music farm, like, you know, yeah. for a quality show. Yeah. Um, and I love playing there. Playing at the Windjammer is really fun, too, and watching shows mm -hmm. there is fun. Inside shows at the gym, Windjammer. The beach stage is cool, but, like, I don't know. The shows are, like, from 7 to 9, and, like, uh -huh. there's nothing behind the stage, like, to reverberate the sound. It's just big open. Uh -huh. And then the front sound, like, bounces off the building, like, back out of the beach. It just sounds weird out there to me. Like, the bands don't sound, but, like, and the, they sound good, but just, like, the the mix just sounds weird. Yeah, the like, acoustics aren't quite right, you know what I mean? Yeah, the acoustics are just weird out there. I don't know what it is, but it's a really cool setting. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The, Find it and everything but the watching shows inside there and playing shows inside mm -hmm. there is just cooler i think i love so. that man that's that's a that's a common answer on the show people love the wind jammer man the music farm is awesome too they had kind of like a hiatus where they went they stopped doing some great shows but they got some lined up soon Place oh, yeah. awesome, man. they've had some awesome bands there recently yeah. um uh like they're bringing like metal shows back which is great yeah um my favorite place to eat in Charleston is uh, I got two places that I get three places that I go Let's to go. <laughs> every week is a uh, Moe's Crosstown Tavern. Right it's right up the street from my house and their menu's huge and it's just well priced and everything there is so good. Yeah. Um, and the staff there is killer. Um, Paisano's. I love Paisano's. 
yes. fucking love Madonna is. Same thing, <laughs> man, huge. Everything's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I really like uh, Santi's Mexican restaurant. Okay. Also wow. right now, it's delicious, dude. We eat there at least once a week. We go to all three of those places at least once a week. Great choices, man. It's great choices. That's a good variety, too, because normally I get some barbecue or some seafood, but I like your answers, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I like barbecue and I like seafood, but I don't know. I'm more of a bar food kind of guy than I got gotcha. you. And you know what I mean? There ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Um, so this was my friend Ben from the band The Hooplas. They got the brand new album Sink or Swims coming out June 20th. Um, I'm guessing Bronco is the lead single off of that album. Yeah, it was the first one we dropped. Um, and we're going to put out another one pretty soon here. I believe we're going to drop a song uh, called High Hopes, which is right cool. A lot heavier than Bronco. But uh, mm -hmm. It's cool. This album's extremely diverse. If you listen to our first two albums, they're the same thing across the board, just way different. Every song's way different than the last one. And uh, we take pride in that, you know. Yeah, versatility is a big deal, man. Yeah, we definitely we strive for that without having to try too hard, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so. mean, um, tell the people where they can uh, keep up with uh, any shows that's going to be happening, a new song that's going to be happening. Where they can get some merch, where they can just stay up to date with everything you guys got going on. Uh, there's the hooplas.com. There's uh, our Instagram is at the hooplas, our Facebook, the hooplas. Um, and then we're on Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff too. So, yeah. Awesome. And I'll throw all the links um, for your for your pages in the uh, the video whenever this comes out, man. But this has been an absolute blast, dude. You're the best. I uh, oh, hope yeah, you're hanging you. out, man, and uh, safe travels yeah. out there in the West Coast, man. Yeah, I can't believe that happened to me today. I was like, dude, I'll never in my life was like, would I ever think I would get bit by a raccoon? <laughs> I can't, dude. It was wild. I know. I was at the ER. I didn't even want to go, really, but I was just reading. I was like, if you get bit by a raccoon, you should definitely go get a rabies shot. I was like, God damn it. So I better go. <laughs> so anyway, so I went and they said it to me. They were like, we never get anybody in here for this. They're like, what were you doing? And I was like, I was just moving a trap. That happened. <laughs> And it, and it somehow got out and bit my hand anyway yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> no problem man. all right dude you're the absolute best man i'm gonna stay in touch good awesome. luck out there in california man y'all have a good time you too thanks man all right man see ya. you